1 John 4, verse 18. This is the crux of the issue. We're charitable on insignificant matters, but this is significant. Well, we're charitable here too, but <laughs> but this we, we don't budge on. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, agape, the love of God in the renewed mind, in manifestation in your life. But in contrast, perfect or mature love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not mature in love. And remember, man's base, the enemy's basic device is fear, like Dr. Wirrell taught us years ago. Of all his tricks and all his me method and all his devices, it boils down to fear. And that's the honesty of your own heart in the Word. If I have a fear or an apprehension or an anxiety, which I have, you have, we're all human. We just read about Paul, right? We deal with it. We take it on with the Word. And if we need help from someone that we trust spiritually, we go for help. I just love this stuff. It speaks right to the chewy caramel center, right to the crux of more than abundant living. We speak straight to this word. All right, Romans 14. Maybe we're ready to go on. Verse 2, for one believeth that he may eat all things. Fried chicken, barbecued ribs, Lone Star beer. Another who is weak, immature, eateth herbs. Now, that's not, a, that's not a weakness to be ashamed of. That's not the point. That's just King James English. You need help in your diet. By this time in my life, I do. So you want to call me weak, go right ahead and see what, where that gets you. I saw a T-shirt advertised. Uh, go ahead, underestimate me. That will be fun. <laughs> people get full of the adversary and want to start pointing their fingers I feel like wearing a t-shirt like that around none of you want to condemn me you're the loser not me but the point is each one of us has a right to make those decisions let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not and that's the whole world is full of that isn't it Somebody have, finds something that finally works for them, and then they think everybody else ought to do it. It's just the arrogance and the vanity of idolatry. All idolatry is essentially vanity, a worship of self. It will always be involved. When they worship false gods, they are worshiping their own weaknesses, their own arrogances. Just think that through and see if I'm not telling you the truth. When they worship, they choose one devil spirit against another disguised behind an idol or a movement or a profession or an ethnic standard or a so-called moral or ethic that they think rules all. Essentially, they're worshiping their own weakness in that idolatry as part of creation and not the creator. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Lombano. So whatever this weakness is, is not a weakness of believing before God. It's just a different category where a person feels they need some extra diligence in a category of body and soul. They need to put a little medicine on that cut, not just say, I'm believing God. It won't get infected. Well, okay, you better be right. Or they say, yeah, I need a little work on my teeth here. I'm believing God to get the best work by the best people instead of saying, okay, I'm believing for God to heal my teeth. Well, if you're doing that, it should happen. It should happen. If it hadn't happened after a while, maybe you're, maybe you're fooling yourself. Get it done. Get it fixed. Let's live a life which is more than abundant instead of living with these distractions. Get the thing fixed so I don't have the distraction of the ache and the pain. Trying to live for the Father. Trying to stay my mind on his word. How much of this word do you think you people would have today in the remnant if I hadn't got my knees fixed? 
How much pain you think I'd be in? Guarantee you, I wouldn't even be walking. That would be sort of a distraction, wouldn't it? Now, if I had to do that, sure, I've taught the word plenty of times, being sick as a dog. Darn right. But if I can get it fixed and remove the distraction where I can sit here now and with no pain, no aches, no distraction, and teach you the greatness of the word, hear the still small voice of God, because by the way, he doesn't write stuff on the walls for me. He works within me to will and to do in a still small voice. That takes vigilance. That takes diligence. That takes the discipline of an athlete to hear the susurrations, the whisperings of the true God as he works within a man's heart. That takes being prepared, having all distractions removed. All my physical need is met. I have not an ache, not a pain, and I can put my full attention into this word and into his holy presence energizing within me. That's doing the will of God. That's the greater cause. So you get it fixed. And no one has any right to condemn anyone else. We all come from different genetic bases. And we all have to be grateful we don't face some of the issues that some people have to face and stay thankful of our overall health and strength and capabilities. So let's just keep it straight. Keep this baloney out of the household of the remnant. It won't do us any good. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? That's a figure of speech called a rhetorical question. And it's not meant to stimulate an answer. It's meant to stimulate thinking. That's, that's how you respond to a rhetorical question. Who are you to say a guy isn't right before God to eat an herb instead of a cheeseburger? Well, that should stimulate thought, right? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Isn't that a great phrase? That of itself is a retemory verse worth retemorizing. To his own master he standeth or falleth, yea. And that's another figure called exclamatory. Behold, yea is behold. Pay more attention. He shall be holding up, for God is capable and able to make him stand. Whether he eats herbs whether he's vaccinated, whether he pogo sticks to work every day because it's good for his calluses, no matter what he does, God is able to make him stand. And we should expect that and rejoice in that with one another. Each has the sovereign right before God to make our own individual decisions in so many of these categories of body and soul. 